Welcome to the iPad Mini 2 Take Apart Guide. First you will need to apply heat around the edge of the display to loosen the adhesive. Once the heat has been applied, use a suction cup to lift up on the glass and use a pry tool to gently separate the glass from the casing. Do this around the entire digitizer. Once the glass has been loosened on all sides, you will need to fold the glass over, leaving the bottom portion of the glass in place because that is where the cables are. There are two screws for the LCD that are covered with pieces of foam. Use your tweezers to remove these two pieces of foam. Now remove the four Phillips screws holding down the LCD. On the top and bottom of the LCD, there is tape holding down the LCD. Use your tweezers to remove this tape. The back of the LCD has adhesive on both sides. Use a thin flat tool to separate this adhesive. Do this carefully and do not use too much force because you can easily crack the LCD. Once the adhesive has been separated, the LCD will fold over like this. Now remove the Phillips screws holding down the metal midboard. and then remove the midboard. Remove the three Phillips screws from the shield covering the battery and display connectors.
Remove the shield and then using your nylon spudger tool, unplug the battery, LCD, and digitizer cables from the logic board, unplugging the battery cable first. Once the LCD is unplugged, it can be removed. The digitizer cable is held onto the casing with adhesive. Use a flat tool to separate the cable from the casing. There are two screws holding down the lightning port that are hidden below two plastic shields. Use tweezers to remove these two plastic shields. Now remove all the screws holding down the lightning port. Next, remove the tape covering the Lightning Flex Cable. Remove the Phillips screws from the Wi-Fi antenna. and then remove the screws from the antenna on the right side. Use your nylon spudger tool to unplug the two antenna connections on the logic board and then remove the Wi-Fi antenna. Now remove the Phillips screws from the logic board. Use your spudger tool to unplug the volume and power flex cable from the logic board. Remove the tape covering the shield at the top of the board. and then using tweezers, remove the shield. Remove the Phillips screw located here. And then using a pair of tweezers, remove the tape and the metal tabs holding down the two cable connections. Using your spudger tool, unplug the cable connections from the board at the top. The lightning flex cable is held onto the casing with adhesive. Use a flat tool to gently pry it from the casing. Before you can remove the board, you will need to remove the SIM card tray. Now use a flat tool to gently pry the board up and out. Remove the screws from the cellular antennas.
Remove the black tape covering the cable connection, and then flip up the cable lock and unplug the cable. Remove the Phillips screw from the headphone jack, and then remove the headphone jack assembly. Next, flip up this section of the cellular antenna and unplug the antenna jumper, and then remove it. Next you'll need to remove the FaceTime camera. Gently separate the adhesive holding down the camera and then slide the cable through the hole in the casing. Next lift the left cellular antenna out. Then remove the Phillips screw from the right antenna and lift the antenna assembly out. You can then remove the dual microphone cable by prying it from the casing. Be careful as the cable can easily be torn. Next, gently pry the rear-facing camera up from the casing. Remove the screws holding down the volume and power flex cable. Gently lift the volume portion of the cable up. Remove the black tape covering the left screw on the power button assembly, and then remove the screw. Now the flex cable assembly can be removed. Pry the two speakers at the bottom out from the casing. To 
To remove the battery, apply heat to the back of the casing and loosen the adhesive holding down the battery. Once the heat has been applied, use a wide flat tool to pry the battery out of the casing.